Hello my loves, Tony here from Teal Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel. Now nothing says crochet quite like a granny square, but did you know that there are hundreds of gorgeous square motifs out there? Today I'm sharing four of my favorite granny squares including the classic granny, the solid granny, a circle and square, and corner to corner. Now if that sounds like a good time to you, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel. And before we get started, we have to pay some bills, starting with our video sponsor, Skillshare. Now you've heard me talk about Skillshare a million times because it is a truly helpful learning community that is always evolving. One of my favorite new features are the learning paths, which are these curated series of classes that are centered around topics that you actually wanna learn about. With the new year just around the corner, it's a great time to plan new projects in your creative hobbies, in your personal life or in your professional life. But how do you get that idea out of your head and into an organized plan? Skillshare is here to help. They've recently launched a learning plan called Creative Productivity that includes six hand-picked classes to help us overcome creative anxiety, spark original and inspiring ideas, and take efficient action to complete those projects. The new year always has me fired up to tackle these really big ideas, and this learning path from Skillshare will keep me grounded, focused, and motivated. Now, if you're looking for that kind of guidance too, I invite you to join Skillshare and take the creative productivity learning path with me. The first 500 friends to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Don't miss out. Now let's talk granny squares. We'll kick things off with a traditional granny square and we have to start it with our magic ring. You can do that however you prefer to do yours. Here's how I like to do mine. I'm going to lay the tail of the yarn over my hand just like this and then I'm going to wrap it twice around my first finger. I'm going to bring that first loop over the second and then the second loop up and over the tip of my finger. I'll then pull the two tails and that's how I make my adjustable ring. I'm going to flip it up so that the knot is at the top. Insert my hook. I'm going to hold on to that knot with my finger and that's going to allow me to pull up a loop. Then I'm going to chain one. My chains do not count as stitches. So now we need to place three double crochet into the ring. So yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two and two. There's the first, here's the second, and here's the third, just like that. I'm gonna follow that with a chain one. So I've got my three double crochets and my chain one. I need to do that three more times. So double crochet three, there's two and three, chain one. So there's the second time. Here's the third time, two, three, chain one. One more time, three double crochet. There's, oop, here's two and three, followed by a chain one. So if we take a look at our work, so far we have three double crochet with a chain one, and we did that a second time, a third time, and a fourth time. So then when I take the little tail out of my ring and pull it closed, I now have the four sides of my square and I'm gonna grab my hook, put that back through the loop. I'm gonna find the top two loops of my first double crochet, which are right here, these two loops. Insert my hook under those two loops for a slip stitch. So I yarn over, pull through those loops and through the remaining loop that's on my hook. So now the center of my square is done. So now I'm going to flip my work. So I always turn my work between rounds and my granny square and that's what keeps it from becoming a vortex. So I'm going to bring this left side towards me and now I'm looking at the back of my work. I need to slip stitch into the chain one space here. So I'm inserting my hook into that space, yarn over, pull up the loop, pull through again for a slip stitch. And that just sets me up to work on this side. So now I can begin with the chain one, like I will for all of my rounds, and place three double crochet into that chain space. There's one, here's two, and one more makes three. Now I don't prefer to chain one between my chain spaces, but you can put a chain one here if you like. Now I'm gonna go into this next corner, this next chain one space right here. Place three double crochet there. There's one, here's two, and three, followed by a chain one. Three more double crochet for one, two, and three. So that corner is complete. 
Now I can go to the next corner, the next chain one space right here. So I'm gonna skip these three double crochet, go into this chain one space and place another corner. So the corner is three double crochet, there's two and three, chain one, three more double crochet. There's one and two and three. Next corner, so I'm skipping these three double crochet, go into the corner, guess what? That gets three double crochet. There's two and three, chain one, three more double crochet. There's one and two and three. I'm gonna move that tail out the way because now I can work my last corner. So if we take a look at our work, we already have one, two, three double crochet in that corner. So we need to place three more. There's one, here's two, and three. Then we chain one and we'll need to find the top of this first double crochet here. So there's the post of the stitch and here are the top two loops. I'm gonna insert my hook under those two loops, yarn over and pull through for a slip stitch. So that's round two complete. Let's do round three. So remember we're gonna rotate this towards us, rotate that left side towards us so we're looking at the back side of the work. Slip stitch into the chain space, follow with a chain one and three double crochets here. There's one, here's two, and three. Remember, I do not chain one between my three double crochet groups, but you can if you want to. Now I'm going to skip these three double crochet and work into this space here. Three double crochet go here. So this is the side of our square and we'll continue increasing the number of spaces on the side of our square and that's gonna make our square larger and larger. Now we're gonna work our corner just like normal. Three double crochet go here. There's two and three chain one, three more double crochet. There's one, two, and three. Now for the side, three double crochet in this space. There's two and three. And the next corner, chain one space is right here. Three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and three more. One, two, and three. Almost there, friends. We're going to skip these three double crochet right here and work into this space. Three double crochet go there. There's two and three. And then we'll work our corner in the next chain one space. There's two and three. Chain one. Three more double crochet right there. There's one, two, and three. Headed to the space, three double crochet here. There's two and three. And now we've made it to our last corner here. So remember, we've got three double crochet here already. There's one, two, and three. So we need to put three more double crochet into that space. There's one, two, and three, followed by a chain one, and then we'll slip stitch into the first double crochet of the round. There's the top of it, inserting my hook under those two loops, and pull through for a slip stitch. So that's the first three rounds. Let's do one more round together, and round four and beyond are worked exactly the same. So rotating our work, and then slip stitch into that first chain one space, followed by a chain one, and three double crochet into that same space. There's one, here's two, and three. And now we're here on the side. So you remember in the row before we had one space, now we have two spaces. So we need to put three double crochet in each of those spaces. There's one, here's two, and three. And onto the next space, that gets one, two, three double crochet. Now for the corner, work the same as always. There's one, two, three double crochet, chain one, one, two, three double crochet. So let's continue around. 
we'll put three double crochet in each of our side spaces and then three double crochet, chain one, three more double crochet into the corners. And now we're at our last corner. Remember, this has the first three double crochet already. So we're going to put three double crochet here. There's two and three followed by a chain one, and then we'll need to slip stitch into the first double crochet of the round. Just like that. We'll pull this tail closed, and you'll want to weave in this tail really, really well. But other than that, you've got your traditional granny square. Next, let's move on to the solid granny square. So this one starts just like our last one. We're gonna make a magic ring. Insert the hook, hold on to the knot, pull up that loop, and start with a chain one. So here we need to make the same round one as last time. So we'll double crochet three, there's two, and three, followed by a chain one, three again, chain one, three again, chain one, and three again. One, two, three, followed by a chain one. We're gonna drop the hook out, grab that little loop, pull the tail, and we've got the four sides of our granny. We're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet of the round and we're gonna turn our work here as well. So now we'll slip stitch into this corner, chain one, and we'll need to place two double crochet into that chain space. So there's one and two. So we have three double crochet here. We need to double crochet in each of those. So there's the first, going under both loops of that stitch. There's two, and here's three. Now we're at a corner, we're at a chain one space, two double crochet, there's one and two, chain one and two more double crochet, there's one and two. Double crochet in each of these three double crochets here, there's one, here's two, and three. Another corner, that gets two double crochet, one, two, chain one, and two more. There's one and two. Double in each of the doubles. One, two, three. And then a double, one, two, chain one, two more doubles for the corner. There's one and two. Double in each of these doubles, we have one, two, three. So here's one, here's two, and don't forget three, it's right here. And now we're at our corner. Our corner already has two double crochets. Remember one and two that we started with. So we need to put two double crochet. There's one and two followed by a chain one, slip stitch into the first double crochet of the round. And that completes round two. Moving on to round three, we're going to rotate our work, turning that left side towards us, slip stitch into the chain space, chain one, two double crochet go here. There's one and two. So now we have, if we find our chain space over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochet between our chain spaces. So make sure you double crochet in each of those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now we're at our chain one space, and that always gets two double crochets. One, two, chain one, and two more. There's one, 
and 2. Remember we have 7 double crochets between our chain 1 spaces in this round and we need to double in each of those. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Here at the corner, 2 double crochet, chain 1, and 2 more. There's 1 and 2. Double in each double to the next chain 1 space. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, <laughs> 6, and 7. Chain spaces here, 2 doubles, 1, 2, chain 1, and 2 more. 1, 2. Last side here, remember we still have 7 double crochets to our next chain 1 space, so don't miss any. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, one more makes seven. Last corner, we've got two double crochets already. We need to put two more. One, two, and a chain space. Slip into the first double crochet, and that is round three. It's looking so good. Let's do one more round together. Remember, we are rotating that left side of the work towards us. Just gives us a really clean transition. It opens up that chain one space so we can easily put a slip stitch there, followed by a chain one. Remember, the corner starts with two double crochet into that space. Now let's see how many double crochets we have to our next chain one space, which is right here. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. So we're adding four stitches to the side on each round. So we'll make sure we double crochet into each of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Corner is always worth the same. Two double crochet, there's one, and two. <laughs> Chain one, two more double crochet. Let's speed things up and finish the round. Just a couple more stitches to my corner. There we go. And now we're back at the corner, which needs two double crochets. There's one and two, followed by a chain one, slip stitch into the first double crochet of the round. And that is our solid granny. Now you'll notice that mine is a little bit curvy. That is because I only put one chain in my corners. If I would have put two chains in my corners, it would probably be fine, but it would also mean that my corners were a lot more open than they are. And I prefer mine closed. So what I would need to do at this point is block my square. So I put this down on blocking boards, pinning those two corners, and you can see how nicely that would lay down. And that, my friends, is the solid granny square. Next, let's get into the circle and square, which also starts with a magic ring. And we're gonna work this up with two colors. I'm starting with this pretty gold for the circle, and then we'll change to pink for the square. So after I make my magic ring, I'm gonna insert my hook, grab that knot at the top, it's being a little fiddly on me, and pull up my loop. Chain one. And I do not use chains for my starting stitches, so now I'm going to double crochet 12 into this ring. So here's one, two, three, here's four, five, six, seven, here's eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We're gonna lift that loop Pull this out, tighten it down just like that. First round is done. 
and I am not going to be turning rounds for my circle. So I'm just going to be continuing on from here. So I'm gonna slip stitch into this first double crochet here. Now I'm gonna chain one, and now I need to put two double crochet into each stitch around. So I'm gonna start right here where I joined and put two double crochet into this stitch. There's one and two. Now move to the next stitch. Two double crochet go here. There's one and here's two. Two in the next stitch. And we'll repeat that all the way around. We'll end up with 24 stitches. Okay, just a few more. And I need to put two double crochet in this last stitch. Now your stitch counts are very important for this square, so we definitely want to give this a count. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 22, and 24. Perfect, we are on track. So now we're going to get our hook in there, find that first double crochet, slip stitch right in there. Now we'll chain one, and now we need to increase in the next stitch, and then just place one double crochet in the following. So we're going to start in this very first double crochet, the same place where we joined. We're gonna put two double crochet here. There's one and two, and then one double crochet in the following. So we increase here, and then we're just working even in this next stitch. So two in the next stitch, one in the following. See that? Two in the next stitch, one, and two, one in the following. And we'll repeat that around. So we've got two going into this stitch, and then we'll place one double crochet in our last stitch. And that's how we go from 24 to 36. Slip stitch in that first double crochet of the round. And then for our very last round of the circle, we're gonna start with a chain one. I'm gonna place one double crochet in this first stitch and one in the following. And then I'm gonna start my increase pattern. The reason I do this is I wanna offset my increases so my circle stays round instead of going like wonky. <laughs> so we've got two double crochet and now we'll increase. And we'll repeat that around. So one double crochet here, one in the following, followed by an increase. See that? So it's one, one, increase. One, one, increase. All right, and we'll repeat that around. And for our last stitch, we need to place two double crochet here. There's one, and two, perfect. So now we'll slip stitch in the first double crochet of our round. And here we've gone from 36 stitches to 48 stitches. So we have this beautiful little circle. And now we're going to change color, which means we need to fasten off our work, pull that loop up and out, and get your second color prepared. So I've got my second color ready here, and I've got my circle. I'm just gonna rotate and start over here. I just don't wanna start in the same place where I ended. And I'm going to put a slip knot on my hook because I'm going to start with a standing treble crochet. So we want to yarn over our hook twice. I'm holding onto my yarn down here, and I'm also gonna hold onto my loop up here. Now I'm gonna find the stitch where I want to start. Right here feels good to me. I'm gonna insert into that stitch yarn over the hook, pull up the loop, still holding onto these loops with my finger. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through two loops, still holding, yarn over, pull through two again, still holding, yarn over, pull through the last two for a standing treble, just like that. Now I'm gonna place two more double crochets in this same stitch. So this stitch now has my standing treble and two additional double crochets there. Now I'm gonna double crochet in the next stitch 
and I'm gonna half double crochet in each of the next two stitches. So that's yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three. So there's one and here's two. Now I need to single crochet in the next four stitches. So insert, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's one, two, three, and four. So what we're doing now is we're creating a nice flat edge to turn this circle now into a square. So I need to half double in the next two stitches. There's one, and here's two. And then I need to double crochet in the following stitch. And now here's that funky one again. I'm gonna put two double crochets in the next stitch. There's one and two, followed by a treble. Okay, great. So from here, I'm gonna go directly to the next stitch, put a treble crochet, followed by a double and a double. Double in the next stitch, half double in the next two, single in the next four. There's one, two, three, and four. Half in the next two, double in the next one, and then it's two doubles and a treble in the next. So you see what's happening here? We're starting to create flat sides by using stitches of different heights. Crochet is just magnificent, is it? I just, oh my gosh, obsessed. Okay, let's make the next side. So, treble in this next stitch, along with two doubles, one and two. Double in the next, half in the next two, single in the next four, one, two, three, four, half in the next two, one, and two, double in the next, and then two doubles, one, two, followed by a treble. All right, next stitch, treble with two doubles, all in the same stitch, double in the next, oop, that was a half, getting ahead of myself, I'm just so excited, double in the next, there we go, half in the next two, single in the next four, one, two, three, four, half in the next two, double in the next, and now we have one stitch left right here, and that one is gonna get two doubles, one, two, and a treble. And now we're just gonna join with a slip stitch in the top of that starting treble crochet, and we've got the first round of our square. So if I back it on up a little bit, like a U-Haul truck, okay? So we've got a really great start going on here. So we've got the first round of our square, but this square actually has two additional rounds. So let's get to those. So again, I'm not gonna turn my work. It's just not needed for the small amount of rounds that we're gonna do here. So we're gonna chain one, and I actually need to put a treble crochet here between these two trebles from the previous round. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook twice, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two again for my treble crochet. Now my next stitch, I need to put two doubles right here. So those would go on in the top of the treble from the previous round. So there's the treble that I started with. Here are two doubles that have gone into that first stitch. Now I'm going to double crochet until I get to one stitch before that corner space. So double crochet in each stitch across 
And then when we get to that treble, that first treble in the corner, that's where we're going to stop and do something a little bit different. So just double in each stitch. Keep going. Okay, so these were the two doubles and a treble that made the first half of my corner. So now in that treble crochet, I'm going to place two double crochet. There's one and two. Now, in this space, before this treble, I need to place a treble. So yarn over twice, I'm going down into the space, not into the stitch, into the space. Just like that. Great. And now I need to place two doubles into this treble crochet. There's one and two. So we're gonna repeat that around. I'm going to double in each stitch across. And then when I get to this first treble here, we know that because we've got the two doubles and a treble, I'm gonna place two double crochet into that treble. And then one treble into this space, two doubles into this treble stitch and double around. So I'm gonna repeat that all the way around. Join me when you get back to this corner and we'll finish up together and do that last round. So we're nearly to the corner here. I've got this treble that I need to place two doubles in. There's one and two. And now I can join with a slip stitch in the top of the first treble of the round. Just like that. So let's back it up a little bit again so you can see what we've got going on here. Absolutely lovely circle and square so far, but we do want to do one more round just to make sure this is beautifully square and also show off that pink a little bit more. So here we go. This time for the corner, we're going to chain one and we're working into that first treble of the round. We're going to treble here and then place two double crochet into this same stitch. And now we're just going to double crochet in each stitch to the next treble. So now we're working along the edges until we get to our next corner. Get so rhythmic and so relaxing after a while. So we're reaching this next corner. And here I have that treble crochet that was in that corner. And you can place markers on that if it makes it easier to spot. So I need to place two doubles, a treble, and two doubles into that corner. And what this does is create a lovely little right angle for our square. So remember our corners are two doubles, a treble, and two doubles. From here, we'll double crochet in each stitch across to our next treble, which is right here. It'll get two doubles, a treble, and two doubles. Double across, work your corner, double across, and meet me here to finish up this square together. Home stretch, my friends. We've just got a few more double crochet to go. I've got one more stitch. Remember I already worked the first treble and two double crochets in my corner. So I need to put a double crochet in this next stitch and I need to finish out my corner. So that is going to need two more double crochet. There's one, there's two, and now I can join with a slip stitch in the top of that first treble, just like that. And now, oh, look at you, gorgeous girl. That is the circle and square and I am in love. I am obsessed. This one will need to be blocked as well. It helps to just make sure that circle shows up really, really well, but it looks lovely in two colors. And now let's move on to our last granny of the tutorial. We'll wrap things up with our corner to corner square. And since we start in a corner instead of the center, we're gonna begin with just a regular old slip knot. I'm gonna put that on my hook, tighten it down, and I'm gonna chain four. There's two, three, and four. And in this pattern, the starting chain three does count as a double crochet, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to put four double crochet in this very first chain that I started here. There's one, 
here's two, three, and four. Now on to the next row, I'm gonna begin with a chain three and turn my work. Instead of working in this stitch here at the base of my chain, I'm gonna work in the space before that stitch. And I'm gonna put three double crochet there. There's one, here's two, and three. No chain one, instead we're gonna skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, we're gonna work in the space before this last stitch and put four double crochet there. One, two, three, and four. So first row had five double crochets. Now this row, we have two sets of four double crochets. Moving on to the next row, we'll chain three, turn our work, Again, we're working in the space before that last stitch. We're gonna place three double crochet here. There's two and three. And now we've got a space between double crochet groups. We'll put three double crochet there. There's two and three. Skipping the next three double crochet, we'll put three double crochet in the space before this last stitch, or four double crochet rather. There's one, two, three, and four. So now we've got three rows done. There's one, here's two, and here's three. So we'll continue in this way until our square is as wide as we want it to be. Let's do one more row together. Remember, we're gonna start with a chain three, turn our work, and we're gonna work in the space before this stitch here, placing three double crochet there. There's two and three. Skipping three double crochet, we're gonna work into the space for three. There's one, two, and three, skipping three, work in the next space for one, two, three. Skipping three, we're gonna work in the space before this last stitch, and we're gonna put four double crochet here. Four in the last one, always. There's three, one more, makes four. So you can see already, we're getting this nice 90 degree angle out of our square. Oh, it's gonna be so pretty. So continue with that row four repeat until your square is half the size you want it to be. So it'll continue to grow out on each of those ends and you'll have half of your square and then we can do the other half. Alrighty, I'm nearly done with my increase section. I made mine a little bit bigger so you could really see the effect of all of this. So we've got four double crochet going into this last space. If we take a look at this here, kind of pull that corner out, we have this nice right angle of a square. And now we can start our decrease section and that begins right here at the beginning of this next row. We're going to chain three and turn our work but instead of working in this first space, we're gonna skip all of these stitches here at the beginning and go directly into this next space and put three double crochet here. There's one, two, and three. And what that'll do is make our first right angle corner here to start on our decrease edge. And now we're gonna double crochet in each space towards the end. So we've got our last space here. I'm gonna put three double crochet. There's one, two, and three. And to finish off this row, I'm gonna skip three double crochet and place just one double crochet in the space before this last stitch. So that now creates the top corner. So we've now started to close off the top of this square, as you can see that here. And that's what we're going to repeat for several more rows. So we're starting with a chain three, turn the work. We're gonna skip this very first space here, placing three double crochet in this next space. One, two, three. So working three double crochet into this last space here. 
And now I'm gonna put one double crochet into this chain space, just like that. And we're gonna repeat that until we have only two double crochet groups here at the top. So let's work one more row together. So remember it starts with a chain three. We'll turn our work, we're skipping this first space, moving directly into the space after the first set of three double crochet. Three double crochet go there. Three and three, three in each space. So three in this space here. Now we're at the end of the row, we have this last chain space, we'll place one double crochet there. So if we take a look at our work, we've got this nice clean edge happening at the top. We've got our straight edges from our increase section and a clean edge over here. So we're gonna continue decreasing on both of our sides just like we've been doing before until we have just two three double crochet groups here on the working row. So continue on until you just have two three double crochet groups in your working row. Alrighty friends, we are ready for our very last row. I have two double crochet in my working row here. I have that starting chain three and that last double crochet. I did play a little bit of yarn chicken and lost, so I had to change color. Happens to the best of us, you know how it goes. So let's insert our hook into this loop and finish off our square. So we're just going to chain three, one, two, three, turn our work. We're gonna skip this first set of three double crochet, place three double crochet in the space after. Oop, there's two and three and then double crochet in this last chain space. And that is the end of our square. I'll just fasten off here, lift this loop up and out. And now we have our corner to corner square. Lovely, and we've got perfect square corners. We will need to block this just a little bit to make sure it's nice and clean. But if you look at that, it's absolutely lovely. What I think would be super fun is if you do the increase section in one color and a decrease section in a second color, that would be so stinking cute. So that is our corner to corner granny square. If you're obsessed with granny squares like me, you can never get enough inspiration. I've pulled three books from my personal collection that I think you'll love. First is the granny square source book. I love how comprehensive this book is. It covers the materials needed, reading patterns, as well as charts, working increases, decreases, and so much more. Then it launches into 100 truly beautiful squares to mix and match into your projects. Then there's block by block crochet, which is great for crochet minimalists who want to play with color. These motifs are inspired by quilting, which is what really caught my eye about this book. It's a great introduction to tapestry crochet, adding dimension to pretty simple motifs. Each pattern includes written and charted instructions. Finally, I can't recommend a modern guide to granny squares enough. This book is fun, vibrant, and colorful, teaching you classic granny squares as well as every variation you can think of. Each pattern includes a skill level so you can track your progress with each square. They finish off the book with four must-make patterns to show off your new skills. Granny squares are on trend now, but they're timeless in the world of crochet. I hope this video is the spark that you need to start your next granny square project. Now, are you a granny squareaholic like me? Let me know how you really feel about granny squares down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye.